There was an unprecedented verdict today in Michigan. Jennifer Crumbly, the mother of convicted school shooter Ethan Crumbly, faces now up to 15 years behind bars. It took 10 hours, over two days, for the jury to unanimously find her guilty of four counts of involuntary manslaughter, one for each of the students who were killed. Her son killed four fellow students at Oxford High School in November 2021. He is currently serving a life sentence with no chance of parole. Jennifer's husband, James Crumbly, is set to go on trial next month, and Jennifer will be sentenced in April. The prosecution argued successfully that she was, quote, grossly negligent for giving her a gun to her son, who was 15 years old at the time, and for failing to get him adequate mental health treatment in spite of this warning signs and red flags. Now, this may have been the moment that decided the case. I've asked myself if I would have done anything differently, and I wouldn't have. If you could change what happened, would you? Oh, absolutely. I wish he would have killed us instead. I want to bring in Megan and Chad Gregory. Their son, Keegan, survived the shooting. Also with us, Ben Johnson, an attorney for the families suing James and Jennifer Crumbly and the Oxford Community Schools. Thank you so much for being here. I'm glad that we're speaking again. Um, Megan, Chad, I know that we have met in the past, and I've been thinking a great deal about your son, Keegan. He lived through this horrific tragedy, but I remember you told me that he was forever scarred and he was changed by seeing Justin Schilling's final moments as they were hiding in the bathroom together. He even texted you, I understand, in a family group chat as it was happening. Megan, how are you feeling and your family feeling tonight now that this verdict has come down of a guilty verdict for his mother? We are ecstatic. For us, this just proves that there was the gross negligence we all believed that was there. So it is a huge win for Oxford, for the four families, for the entire community to know that there is some accountability finally at this point. I mean, Chad, thinking about what it's been like for so many members of the community more broadly, let alone your son, I mean, he has had to go to therapy for years to process what's happened. I mean, the survivor's guilt you've spoken about, um, his feeling of not wanting to have left the bathroom, he could do nothing to have changed this. And yet he still felt that in his heart. Now between Ethan Crumbly now having a life in prison sentence without parole and now the guilty verdict, does, does your son Keegan feel some sense of, of justice being served? Will this help him? It's a very complicated question to answer uh, because while we try to remain private in our family life, um, Keegan's working through his own recovery right now. It's a very complex uh, PTSD. And like we talked about with trauma, it doesn't respect time. And so the good news is he's relatively shielded from this, but I believe as he processes through his emotions and he really feels what the emotions come out from that day. You know, he was angry with the parents. Um, he shared that with us openly. And and he didn't really lean into his anger uh, as much before because he, he suppressed it. Um, and I think we, as parents, hold all of this at, at a much, we feel the gravity of it, where he's still working through what this really has has impacted him, you know, personally in our entire family. So, you know, it's it's hard, and I think there's not closure right now, uh, but it's one more step. It's one more accountability measure. That's so important, and I really thank you for your honesty because. For so many reasons, this will be a work in progress and a moment that will touch all of our lives, let alone your community and your personal life, for um, for the reasons you have said. And I, you know, the sentencing is coming up. She is facing up to 15 years in prison, Megan, and there'll be a time, undoubtedly, for what is known as victim impact statements, where members of the community can talk about what this experience has done and will offer their suggestion for an appropriate sentence to the judge considering this very case. Have you given any thought to what you think is appropriate for her sentence? 
to be honest, I haven't even gotten to that yet. I haven't even thought through what I think is appropriate. In my mind, you know, she has only served two years and there are four children that are no longer with their families. So if she gave her 15 years, I would not be sad. You know, when you think about this, Ben, and what's to come, obviously there is another trial coming up. It is the husband of Jennifer Crumbly, who is also facing charges for what happened on that fateful day. Um, and so many people are looking ahead to this very moment. He will go to trial in March. Uh, ben, I wonder, do you think that he'll face the same guilty verdict in that trial then? Well, it's a huge jump forward, right, Laura, as you know, as a lawyer, um, a lot of evidence depends on the jury and so forth. But we know the evidence and we think the evidence is overwhelming against Mr. Crumbly as well. He purchased the gun for a young man that he knew was disturbed and having extreme difficulties without getting him the appropriate help. So, uh, yeah, I think he's going to see the same fate. And unlike a lot of people in this process, uh, I'm not shocked and I'm not worried about future parents being charged for crimes that their kid did. That's not what happened here. It's how it's been labeled by certain people. These people, but in this case, Jennifer Crumley was found guilty by a jury of her peers in Oakland County, her home county, because of the things that she did completely wrong and the things that she didn't do completely wrong, one of which happened to be obviously supporting a gun being purchased for this young man. And she hurt going to the uh, shooting range days before and not telling and not ever telling the school personnel about that gun. So huge problem. You know, what an important point you've raised. And, and Chad, Megan, I'll give you both the last word on this because you know, I, I keep going through my mind as a mommy, right? And thinking about how my kids and all of our kids are having active shooter drills as part of their curriculum. I mean, the way we used to have recess is pretty standard. They're having active shooter drills. And we look at other parents. We look at what could change. We wonder how this could have happened and is, is continuing to happen. And when you look at this verdict and the implications of the possibility that this could send the message that red flags could not and should not be ignored, what goes through your mind? I'm thankful for that. I hope that parents are paying attention and taking mental health seriously. Taking care of your children is so important. I mean, Chad and I are raising five children and I'm not worrying about if I'm going to go to jail because I did something wrong. You know, our goal is to get our children to adulthood and teach them how to contribute to society. So my hope is that people are watching and if you see things with your child, do something about them. You know, our child told us he was having uh, struggles. Like Chad had told you before, the survivor's guilt is a lot. And, you know, we immediately got him help. It wasn't even a question. I think the part that I would just add is we, all parents, have a duty and we're not all equipped. And so you have to take a partner and you have to ask for help and you have to identify the, the signs. And it is a sad, sad world right now that our kids have to grow up in and they're becoming conditioned for it. And the, and the society and the public are becoming tone deaf. And so I think as uncomfortable as we are even saying what we do uh, publicly here, it's important not to be tone deaf and you got to take this very serious mental health as megan said is is so important megan and chad um ben johnson thank you i i can't tell you how important and impactful it is to continue to have these conversations and frankly for parents to have these very honest conversations about what we're trying to do. We oftentimes are building a plane while we're flying in the plane. In our hearts, we want to do the right thing. And just talking about how you're providing for your children and what it takes to do so and the care, I just really thank you for that honesty tonight. Thank you so much, all of you. Thank you, Lori.